As you know, the House of Commons meets tomorrow at 2.45 London time. And I can tell you that the Prime Minister is being urged very strongly, not only to outline the recent exchange between Hitler and the British government, which so far remains a secret, but he has today been urged by certain opposition leaders to tell the whole story of the breakdown of negotiations with the Soviet Union. If he does tell that story, we shall be in for further surprise. Mr. Chamberlain has been told that Parliament will provide a good sounding board, that a full, complete statement would convince doubters that he has no appetite for personal government and is prepared to defend Britain's action in the open. Of course, what he says will, in large measure, depend whether or not will, be, will depend upon whether or not he has received Herr Hitler's reply to Britain's message, which Sir Neville Henderson is now taking to Berlin by air. On the whole, I should say that the possibility of avoiding war has not increased during the day. Government circles are, in fact, exceedingly pessimistic. But there is a general belief that the strategic position is improved, that Hitler is hesitating, that the Russians may betray the Germans. You are already aware of the reaction in Tokyo and Madrid as a result of Hitler's retreat to Moscow. We are not yet certain of its full effect in Rome. Italy still has only a quarter of her army under arms. And if war comes, and Italy stands with the Germans, she will suffer more terrible havoc than will Germany. There is still hope that Hitler may pause and think again. There is still the possibility of a conference. The people with whom I have talked in London today certainly haven't expressed any optimism, but their spirit is better. They believe the Germans are worried and uncertain, if not frightened, and that's a pleasant situation to most Englishmen. They think, rightly or wrongly, that they now have the initiative, that if war comes, they will win it. But that if we have a conference instead, the result is likely to be only a postponement. That view is reflected in the evening news, which says, what can Britain or France do to prevent war at the last moment, unless Herr Hitler takes some steps toward calling off his dogs and agreeing, in the words of President Roosevelt's appeal, to refrain from any positive act of hostility for a reasonable stipulated period. Even if Herr Hitler did so agree, it would but postpone the day of reckoning so long as he is in his present mood, which is that of a wayward child who has never been crossed. So far as I can learn, the Poles have not been subjected to pressure by Britain. No one could truthfully say that the alliance with Poland has ever aroused any popular enthusiasm in Britain. Britishers know very little about Poland. The necessary historic and sentimental ties are missing. But the matter is not now so much one of Poland as it is of Britain's pledged word and the determination to move in one direction or the other out of this twilight of peace. Hitler has made his demand. Now he pauses. It is difficult to see how any solution is to be reached on Hitler's terms. That is to say, any solution that would provide anything more than a temporary relief. Now the Queen is returning from Scotland tonight, and the two princesses are remaining there. Everything is being prepared for zero hours. Britain is moving up to the line, and I should be less than truthful if I fail to report that some people see it coming with almost a sense of relief. Those are the people who maintain that the retreat is going on far too long, and that time and determination are now required. And we feel that perhaps war is the only solution, and that the resulting new order will be better than the one we have fumbled with for the past 20 years. I don't know, but the decision must be made. The folks here seem to think it will be made during the next 36 hours. I return you now.